So today, we need to talk about a player in the transfer portal that just recently dropped their top five schools, and that, of course, is Oshawan Mathis, hailing from Manor, Texas, and transferring from TCU. We need to talk about the five schools Mathis has listed, plus one of the schools looking like it could be pulling ahead of the others in the battle for Mathis, and what it is Oshawan would provide each of these institutions. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Why for yes, in for no. And with Gary Patterson going from TCU to Texas, it looks increasingly likely like Oshawan Mathis could follow. So with that in mind, do you believe that Mathis will be a Texas Longhorn? And let me know what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed this content, like and comment down below. Those interactions are massive for content creators such as myself in both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But with all that being said, let's hop right into this. And we can't talk about the process that Oshawan Mathis is about to face or what he would offer to these institutions if we don't understand the institutions listed. And in no particular order, it's the Nebraska Cornhuskers, USC, Ole Miss, Penn State, and the Texas Longhorns. And Oshawan Mathis is an intriguing prospect. A former three-star out of Manor, Texas, he's had multiple productive seasons in college football. He's had three straight years of 40 plus tackles. In 2020, he notched nine sacks, and in 2021, he put four more on top of that. So, this is an individual that has been productive on the college level, and especially that 2020 season in which he had 40 plus tackles and nine sacks. So at the end of the day, when Mathis transfers from TCU, he offers any of these institutions someone who not only has experience, who not only has production, but can fill a hole on those rosters with that experience and production, which is a major net positive. And I consistently talk about this, how the transfer portal is a pendulum. You win some, you lose some, but what you have the ability to do is fill your team and fill holes on your team with people who may have had tangible experience at the collegiate level, something you just can't do through recruiting. Now, that doesn't mean to ignore recruiting. Recruiting, at the end of the day, is still going to be the lion's share of your team. It's just if you have recruiting misses, the transfer portal really allows you to be able to mask some of that. So Oshawan Mathis would be a big deal for any of the institutions listed. But we have to talk about the relationship with the Texas Longhorns, because first and foremost, he's a Texas kid who played his college football in Texas at TCU. And the individual who recruited him, Gary Patterson, the former head coach of TCU, just took a position with the Texas Longhorns. So when you look at the totality of circumstances, it looks likely that Oshawan Mathis would end up in Texas. And we've only talked about the circumstances from the outside. When you look at what Texas needs, that edge rusher position is going to be a major point of emphasis, if I had to imagine, from now until the season starts. When we look at what Texas wants to do from a schematic standpoint, looking at PK, those edge rushers are paramount to his scheme, and getting an a guy such as Mathis that has tangible college football experience and production would be a major win for the Longhorns defense and for PK specifically getting in guys that he knows can fit his scheme that's going to accelerate how the Texas defense can start improving so Oshawan Mathis would be a major win for the Texas Longhorns for multiple reasons he's an in-state kid you'd keep him in state you have the familiarity with Gary Patterson and from a schematic standpoint he plays a position that you need desperately but one thing we need to understand in recruiting and this is an extension of recruiting even though it's through the transfer portal it's still recruiting the most likely situations can turn unlikely at the drop of a hat so we do need to talk about the other four institutions listed and we can start with nebraska now scott froston is in a position where the pressure is really turned on but he was able to go and get a transfer quarterback that should be a major net positive can he follow it up with a major prospect on the defensive side of the ball out of the state of Texas as well? It's going to be something interesting to see. Ole Miss is in a situation where there's a lot of moving pieces there. If they can get in more defensive talent, they absolutely need to do so because I don't think there's anybody in the world that questions Ole Miss's offense under Lane Kiffin. I think everybody expects for that from a schematic standpoint to be sound. The question has to be asked though. 
what's Ole Miss's defense going to do? Are they going to take that next step? Because it's a necessary next step that they must take. An individual such as Mathis with the production, with the experience, would be huge. But we can say the same for an institution such as USC. With so many moving pieces around USC right now, we don't expect the offense to be a point of contention for the Trojans under Lincoln Riley with Caleb Williams. The offense is something I think is going to get figured out sooner rather than later. It's the defense where we have questions. And Oshawan Mathis would be able to provide some answers for those questions. Now, I'm not saying he would mask everything, but he would certainly provide some answers to some initial questions for the USC Trojans on the defensive side of the ball. And another question you have for USC is who's going to be that first big name defensive guy for Lincoln Riley and company? USC has been nabbing some big time defensive players through recruiting, whether we're talking about five star Corey Foreman, four star Rayshon Davis, and then five star Damani Jackson. So they've had success on the defensive side of the ball recruiting, but can they extend that to Oshawan Mathis? It's going to be a tough pull. And finally, Penn State. And Penn State is one of those schools where if you see Penn State battling with you for a recruit, you know you're in for a tough battle. Penn State is an institution that provides a lot of opportunity, and they've been a good school for a while. The tough part is, though, is going into Texas and lifting a kid that has so many close connections, not only to the state of Texas, where he grew up and where he's played his initial college football, but with the coach who recruited him that's now with the Texas Longhorns. So whenever you're pitching to Oshawan Mathis, you have to be able to beat that familiarity, the proximity to home, and the fact that from a schematic standpoint, he's a major need for the Texas Longhorns and would be a major addition for the Horns. And that's something they're absolutely going to be pitching for him. So at the end of the day, when you're looking at this, the Texas Longhorns need to do everything in their power to secure the commitment of Oshawan Mathis. His production would be a major net positive for the Longhorns, but it's not simply production. It's the experience he has that can help the Horns defense, but can also help some of those younger guys develop along. That to me is a win-win, and that's something that the transfer portal affords. Something that's really intriguing, and we have to watch how it affects teams moving forward. We've seen what Mel Tucker did at Michigan State. It's going to be interesting to see the effects the transfer portal will have on teams such as Ole Miss, USC, and OU this upcoming season, because they all did phenomenal work in the transfer portal. But I don't need to tell Longhorns fans that, because you and the Oklahoma Sooners are the only two institutions that signed both a top 10 recruiting class and a top 10 class in transfer portal acquisitions. So hop down to the comments. Let me know what you're thinking about this situation. That's it. See you.